Hola mis espíritus creativas! So today I am going to be doing a tutorial that has been a highly requested tutorial ever since September of last year when I first started sculpting my own frames. A few of you guys have been asking how I do this so I wanted to make sure that I give you guys some tips so you guys can try it out because it's honestly so much fun. Before we get started though, I just wanted to give a little background on this piece. This piece is actually for La Bodega Gallery's show called Spirit Animals. As with anything, there's going to be an initial learning curve, but once you give it a couple of tries, I think you guys will do awesome. And also, if you happen to try any of these tips, be sure to hashtag ShoemakerArt because I just love seeing when people learn something from my channel. I think it's amazing. So the piece itself is based on the harpy eagle. The harpy eagle is the national bird of Panama, so it's very near and dear to my heart because my mother is Panamanian. So without further ado, let's get started on this tutorial. I wanted to start with the materials that you're going to want to use for this project. So the first material is the resin itself. So the resin that I use is called Magic Sculpt and it comes with two tubs. It comes with hardener and resin. This is what I enjoy. I heard that epoxy sculpt is very similar. You just mix two equal balls of it, 50-50, e equal volume, and you have 40 minutes to work with it before it starts to set, which is awesome, but it can be challenging because you don't want to overmix too much and you also want to work kind of quickly or just work in layers, work a little bit at a time. The next thing that you're going to want is a couple of different tools. So what I got is this thing called the Super Sculpey 5-Way Tool and this has multiple attachments that you can use. A razor, this will help you cut the, uh, the resin and be able to form those straight lines. You're going to need some water to work with. This will smooth out the dough. You want a surface to work on, so this could be a plastic surface, you can get aluminum foil, anything to protect your table. Another thing that you might want is a mold to create the indents of the piece. I will demonstrate in the video how I use them, but what I do is I take a frame that already exists and has like a little fancy ornate design, and I press my, um, resin into it when it's wet and then I let it dry until it creates like a little mold and then you can use it to press on and indent further pieces. You're also going to need some frame paint and acrylics and later on in the video I will show you exactly what kind of frame paint that I use. You're also going to need some hanging hardware and wire and backing. Now this last one for me is very important but my first frames I actually did not use this at all so if you do not have access to something called a scroll saw you can completely omit this part and just go straight into sculpting. Um, but for me, I found that getting those perfectly smooth lines around the frame as well as where the picture itself goes, um, I found that actually getting a piece of MDF, which you can buy in Home Depot, which is kind of like a wood that doesn't splinter so easy, um, get that wood and you're going to create an intricate design, which will be the very base. So now that you guys have your materials all gathered, we can go start cutting some wood. So the very first thing that I'm doing is I am taking the template which I created on Photoshop. What I did was I made a frame mock-up on Photoshop using a couple of different inspiration pictures and used that as kind of a, a template. and transferred this onto the wood as you can see here it's four separate parts I have the two pillars as well as the top and the bottom of the frame then I am taking black gesso paint and I am just going to coat the back and the front with the gesso paint And now we're ready to start sculpting. So what we do here is that we are mixing the epoxy sculpt together and we just go right ahead and put it on top of that. The gesso, you wanna make sure you don't sand it so that it has some tooth for the sculpture to stick onto. Now as you can see, I am literally just pressing the clay on there. Some of the longer strips I am taking, I am rolling it out into thin strips 
and then I am using the impression of an ornate frame that I already have to get some of those details and if I'm not doing that then I am using the tip to create these little patterns and make it look like flowers or give it some lines and doing some impressions with that it's really just experimentation and having fun with it and playing around as far as the heart, I did uh, decide to do the whole thing over because <laughs> I actually forgot to mix the hardener with it, so I had to do it over anyways. So what I did is I took it and did it uh, piece by piece, so I did the aortas first, or like the circular parts, put those in the bottom, and then just imagine like it's a puzzle fitting together and then doing each little piece because I only have 40 minutes and I want to make sure that I can work it as much as I can in those 40 minutes so I do a little bit at a time And then here I'm just using some of the different tools to create the lines and the textures. I like to use the thin needlepoint tools to make little tiny veins. I like to use the bigger tools to make indents and make those shadows that cast and make it really look like a living heart. Now piece by piece I'm using the same kind of idea for the other pieces. I'm also taking inspiration from the Angkor Wat temple. I really wanted it to look like a uh, old ancient ruin so I looked at pictures of ancient ruins for both color inspiration as well as design inspiration. As far as the trees go I am just taking these long flutes that I roll out of the resin and laying them on top of each other, draping them over and just putting more and more and more onto it. It's a very slow process, but slowly, little by little, it starts to look like what you want it to look like. I use little tiny pieces and tiny squares and using the razor to kind of make them even more squared to make it look like it's kind of brick and then using that needlepoint to create cracks in the brick and using a napkin as well to give it some texture so that it's not perfectly smooth and raising up certain parts of it. Again, it's very helpful to look at some sort of reference picture. You don't have to go exactly by it, but looking at a reference picture can really help you to get some design elements. And again, just continuing the flower uh, details onto these pieces, uh, inspired by the Angkor Wat that I saw. I wanted to have that reoccurring theme. The leaves, I just made a little heart shape, flattened it out, and then used a razor to cut out where the leaf edges would be, and then used my little needle point tool to create little indents so that it would look like a leaf. As far as sculpting the bird head, I started by making a little knob of resin, and then letting it dry up, and then coming back to it, adding a little bit more, maybe doing the feathers, coming back, then doing the eyes letting that dry up, then doing the beak and just doing little by little so that I can really build a strong base for the piece. And I did that with um, with a lot of the parts of this piece. I would let the, uh, the tree detail dry up before I would add more tree detail so as to not disturb that and allow it to dry nice and strong. And I'm doing the same thing on the other side building a little bit of a base, making sure I have a little indent where the eye will be, kind of looking at my reference picture every once in a while just to make sure that the eye is in the right spot and that the beak is in the right spot because 
I'd prefer to do it right now than have to sand it down and then try it again later. Just keep looking at your reference picture, especially for things like this or the heart. Everything else is kind of more meditative and that you can experiment and have fun with it. Then we are going to take black frame paint and we're going to coat the entire thing. You want to make sure you use frame paint so that it stays nice and sturdy and won't scratch off of the resin. Now here's the fun part. You get to use all kinds of frame colors that you'd like. I used a blue, I used red, I used gold, I used every color under the sun. I also used a charcoal or a matte gray color and coated everything because it was a little too intense for me. And then I went in with some green acrylic paint to make like these moss details. Then I wouldn't like it, I'd cover it again with the matte gray paint. Kept experimenting, kept going back and trying new things, putting in more green. Then I made it to green, then I would add more charcoal and matte black. And just <laughs> doing that over and over and over again until I finally get something that I'm happy with which took me a long time for this and I was kind of worried for a little bit that I wouldn't get it to where it would look good with the painting but eventually I did get it down it just took a lot of patience to work on the frame painting what really made everything look polished and beautiful was the antique wax I used a brown antique wax and went over everything with my paintbrush and made sure it got into all the cracks and crevices and this really gave it an old, very ancient ruin feel, which is what I was going for. And finally, it's all coming together. I'm just taking resin glue and putting it on the outsides of my painting. You want to make sure that you have a large border around your painting. I use uh, tape, painter's tape to kind of mark it off and then attach that to that, then put in the backing and the D-rings and the wiring, which I did not record, but that's how I did it. And this is the final sculpture. The frame is now complete. You thought it would never be done, and here you are. And here is just a view of everything from top to bottom. And with all of those steps, you now have a hand sculpted frame. I've always been a big admirer of these beautiful ornate frames. I think the frame can be part of the artwork itself. If you don't follow me on Instagram, feel free to follow me on there if you like my work. You can also follow my Facebook page. All of my social media will be in the description below as well as a detailed list of my materials. If you guys have any tips of your own, also feel free to comment below and let me know because I'm always learning just like everybody. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more like this. This piece is available at La Bodega Gallery, so if you want to purchase, it is available there. And I thank you guys so much again for watching, and I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Bye!